So to start off, we're going to go to variations, custom variation, and choose modify layback crossing because we're modifying existing codes on the template. It is important that you know the start chainage and that you have a sample line located at your start chainage, otherwise you'll get the nearest available sample line. Have a look at the resample sections video in the V25 YouTube playlist, which shows you how you can automatically have drafted line work or polylines or arcs used for the positioning of sample lines you can always just use the add extra sections button which is what I'm going to do to add a single chainage at this particular spot here. To make sure that you actually pick that nominated spot you need to click the picker tool and pick just ahead of that particular sample line. It always looks for the nearest previous sample position. You do not need to know your end chainage. The software will terminate the variation using the lengths that are specified below. So as long as your chainage exceeds the length of your entire drive and transitions, then you will be okay. So we're gonna pop in 195. This particular script uses one code to define the layback. And in this case, it happens to be the what we're specifying as the left back of curb. This is going to become the back of our layback. The height of that particular code in relation to the one before it will be 60 mil and the width in relation to the one before it will be 570. So we're just going to make that 0.6. The previous code is automatically picked up by this script. You don't have to specify it. So if you've got something different before it, it doesn't matter. The software just looks for the previous code. It uses that as the lip code. The lip width and lip height in this instance are zero meaning that the TK code will have zero width from the invert and zero height. So you can specify in here, and we might do this 30 mil for the width and the height, meaning that I'll have a TK code, which is 30 mil up and 30 mil across. As far as the transition goes, you can specify these lengths yourself. So in my case, I have a meter. I then have a crossing width of 3.6 and then the end transition is one meter, but you can put in whatever values you want. We have a number of different options available to us through here. I'm going to show you each one individually once we've created the variation to show you how they all operate. So change offset and hold slope is essentially doing what would happen most of the time is if you go and linearly vary or change the position of the back of curve code, this section here keeps its current width and slope and then the footpath and all remaining codes behind will be moved. So we'll use this option first to show you the difference. We have an extra sampling rate so the software will go in and pick up these individual locations for the transitions and the crossing and add extra sections but you may find that you want extra sections in between to get that detail. 0.5 is the default. Obviously we want this variation to be active but when you click add update it is crucial that once you've clicked add update that you run recalculate and the reason why you would run recalculate is because if you do not have sample lines located at the change positions on your driveway this variation will add them for you but to add them in you have to click on recalculate so yes I'm doing that now but it's not necessary if you open up the project after you've created this variation and you can see that it appears that the variation hasn't been applied all you need to do is resample your strings so you can see what's happened here if we open up the cross section to a uh, cross section in this particular location which is what I'm going to do you can see there I've got that 30 mil step followed by my driveway width, followed by that 2% being maintained and the original section width also being maintained. So let's have a look at and see what happens when we make a change here. So hold offset and current level says keep the footpath code in its original position and maintain its original level. Let's see what happens when we apply this. So you can see obviously that slope has changed, but the level has um, been maintained all the way through the back. We then have hold offset and current slope. So what this will do is maintain the original 2% to set the elevation of the footpath. And then lastly, we have the option to hold offset and specify slope. So if I want to nominate this slope myself, but keep the footpath in its original position, I can then specify a value in here. So we'll make that three and click on add update. Let's have a look at how this variation appears in model viewer. So you can see how we've got that 30 mil step. We've then got our layback code being adjusted. You can see that the extra half meter sampling being added in to give us that nice detail. And then we have that transition of fall from 2% down to the 3% 
over the course of that transition.